I'm not in a contest with anybody, says a Boy State Governor David Umahi, as he declares his ambition for the 2023 presidential elections. And on the issues of insecurity, the Middle Belt Forum says declaring bandits as terrorists hasn't changed anything. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The Abon State Governor David Umahi, who recently declared his ambition for the 2023 presidential election, has said he's not in a contest with anybody but himself. He said this after a meeting with the president, informing him of his intention to contest the post of uh, the president under the umbrella of the All Progressive Congress, he said. If the APC throws its ticket open to the southern part of the country, his achievements in the past six years would enable him clinch the ticket. Well, joining us to discuss the, this is political analyst Francis Chilaka and public affairs analyst Sunny Maduka. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. You must have to consult widely and uh, you know, go to all the leaders. Well, um, sorry about that um, glitch. I'm going to start with you, um, Doctor. So he's saying that the six years that he has served in a boring state should be enough for the average Nigerian to pick him um, as a presidential candidate for, um, you know, the APC. But let's start by looking at the strides of this governor in a boring state. Um, he's been there for six years. What are the things that we can point to as some of the you know, great strides that he's made that would qualify him for this position? Well, foremost, uh, let me just start by saying that every Nigerian is qualified, you know, if you are within the age bracket as stipulated in the Constitution. Uh, Omahi's uh, presidential ambition is already known right from the time he defected from PDP to APC. So most of us already know that uh, he's already vying for something. Uh, so that defection is a clear indication of his ambition. Mm. So he has a, a perfected intent right from that day he defected. So it's not it's not more news. I think he's just coming to uh, polarize his intention to the public. But we already know that uh, his ambition is to be the president of this nation. There's nothing wrong in it, but let me add, the problem we have today is before we choose anybody that is going to be president, we should look at the antecedent now. For the past six years, Nigeria has been under certain kind of uh, condition. So we would like to have somebody who has a clear vision of where he's leading us. And if you look at Ebo instead, Ebo instead is just a state. So when you're leading a country, it's, it's beyond the state. So I'm looking at beyond tradition, beyond religion, beyond the tribe. Let us get it right this time around. So I'm really happy that people are coming out. And it's still not who is not yet the scorecard for us to say, oh, this is the person. But from what you just asked, yeah, Omaya had done a lot well in terms of infrastructure in um able state he has done quite very well but there are other areas i don't appreciate some kind of and that areas are one his wavering spirit what i mean by wavering spirit somebody who has no principle because he is a founding father of that party pdp so when he defected I, as, as of today has not clearly uh, told nigerians this is the reason why i defected at least that's what I, is, I expect of somebody like that. He's supposed to tell us why he defected. But from indicators, you can see it's a kind of personal interest than national interest. Then two, he's going to have a problem on trust because somebody with without that principle of staying cute to where he started, people are going to look at him as somebody who cannot be trusted. But it doesn't really matter. Ambition is ambition. Everybody has a political ambition. And of mm. course, you know, politicians are one of the people you cannot track. Mm. And then you talk about another inhibition, the crisis in the state. is one of the worst states when you talk about crisis within the Southeast. How much has he been able to uh, cover that gap? How much has he been able to 
quell the gap. As at today, we have Benue clashes on border. We have Anambra border clashes. We have even Hesmen and indigenous clashes. And of course, being the chairman of uh, Southeast governors, what has he done with the Bubago that, we are, that was floated? So these are the reasons that I'm looking at. Then, fourthly, his base. Has he been able to garner support from his base? You know, if he had been able to do that, then it's, it's going to be good. But I think uh, most of the South, South East, uh, not necessarily, let me put it that way, APC, whatever, except the, the Supreme Court judge that added the APC within the caucus of uh, uh, South East. So these are the issues. To me, beyond Omahi, governor's um, uh, presidential aspiration, Nigerians should look right well before choosing anybody okay. in 2023. We have gone a lot this period. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Francis Chilaka, it's interesting. I know that this is, you know, when you throw your hat into the ring or declare an intention to run for any office, uh, it also can be seen as a popularity test of sorts. And, and most times you hear people say, well, let's see how popular you are. As opposed to others who have also declared intentions or those who are consulting the likes of the Kwankwasos, of the, uh, the likes of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, the vice president, uh, and several other people who might be intending to run for office. Um, Governor Mahi placed side by side with these people. How, and just like the, the doctor said, what is his base like? How much ground can he cover? Uh, cover, I beg your pardon, to be able to say, well, he can actually, um, you know, run for this office and get the kind of votes that he desires. Oh, well, let me start by saying that, yes, um, like Dr. Maduka said, uh, uh, he has every right as an Nigerian citizen to fire for the presidency. But you see, my problem with Nigerian politicians is that they have no ideology, just as the political parties do not have an ideology. I mean, if you think and you believe that you are a good candidate of presidency in Nigeria, why must you first and foremost come from one party to another? It's, it's, it's coming more like, okay, uh, we're running a party system where credibility does not matter. But for me, I would say that, um, Umayi, well, I, I honestly don't understand where he's coming from. I, understand, I don't understand where he's heading to. Uh, because uh, when we talk about People who have what it takes to be, uh, be a president, um, he, I, for me, he is not one of those I will look up to. Why? In every aspect of it. Why? I will look up to him because I have, I have people who have also worked under his administration, who do not speak well of his administration, who do not have anything good to say about his administration. And for me, I think that the time for us as Nigerians to go beyond party, beyond individual, and begin to look at credibility. Begin to look at what you have to give to the Nigerian people. And it is so nauseating and so annoying when people want to declare their intention to contest for presidency. They have to first of all go to Asso Rock to pay homage. It doesn't, it doesn't speak well of any candidate. I think that the person... The but, but, they're are me, but they're members of a political party, and I'm not in any way speaking for no, the APC, no, no. by the way, but they are members of a political party, which the president the is president, also part of. This, this, this and the president, the president, in quote, president. just hang on, hang on, the president, no, no. in quote, might uh, actually is the leader of the party. So if you do have or you are nursing an intention, of course you go to your leader and tell your leader that this is what my no, intention no, is. Maria. Maria, the time to change the status quo is now. The Nigerian people have the sovereignty. Sovereignty belongs to the people. So for those who, are, who want to lead this country, they must realize that sovereignty belongs to the Nigerian people and they must respect the, the, the Nigerian people. First of all, declare to the Nigerian people before you begin to declare your intention to any other person. For long, politicians have taken due advantage of Nigerians. They do not respect Nigerians they do not see Nigerians as people they should relate with when it comes to leadership. They see themselves first before the Nigerian people. But the Nigerian people are the ones who actually give out the power to them. So they owe it to us to respect us and to declare to us first before any other person. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I just want to pinpoint some of the issues. And I'm not in any way supporting 
or against uh, the governor. But there are a few things that we've uncovered about the governor. Um, remember some time ago, the governor had ordered the arrest of a journalist um, over some Facebook post about Nigerian politicians and the army. He was widely criticized. Um, and of course, um, lots of people would kick against this as to this is the person who wants to run for office. Let's not forget that Nigerians are still fighting and fuming over the social media bill, uh, the fact that Twitter has been shut down, and the fact that you know the media has somewhat faced some form of gagging over time. So looking at the character and the person of Governor Omahi, with all of these things hanging around his neck, should he be the person that people be throwing their weight behind uh, to be a presidential aspirant, especially as a time like this where the Southeast is also uh, putting its best foot forward, is it, is he, can he be considered as part of that best foot that is being put forward? Yeah, okay. Maybe I don't know why the, the question is for me. You can go ahead. You let can me, take it. Let, yes. let me go and let me hit it. Okay, there are three basic things I will tell you about um, what we're going through right now. One of the basic things that Nigerians are going through is uh, dictatorial. We have almost a regime that is dictatorial. Nigerians will never, never accept anybody that has such tendency of dictatorialship within the purview of being a president. Two, we have crisis in security matters. The security of this uh, regime has shown that there's a lot of problems which we have not even solved. Just today, within the Absu, and it's quite a year, and you know, you know, a lot of um, uh, you know, he cops of uh, uh, his men, you know, banditry. So people will look for somebody who is going to secure their lives. They're looking at Governor Mahi, and the problem within the Ebony State, where you have Lord Panther being the almost the headquarters of his men, and uh, almost every time you hear about crisis from Ebony State. And up to now, has not been able to sort that out. It's going to be a minus to his ambition. I said it here before, that is the, is the governor, is the chairman of the governorship, uh, one of the governors in the uh, Southeast. He has not been able to manipulate or make deal with the bag he they floated. As of today, we don't even know whether it's a or whatever. But nothing is working. But is that his Look sole responsibility? Abubago is a security network for the Southeast, which means that the onus is on all the Southeast governors to make sure that this outfit works. So can we just really put that at the foot or the doorstep of uh, Governor Umahi? He's just one person. Yes, yes, yes. Because look at the uh, Akira Dudu, you know, the Andamato Kun. You know, be, when you are a chairman, you, the responsibility is on you to ensure that that outfit works. It's not about whether other governors. You are the chairman. You you are the one that everybody's looking at. Because what you're talking about presidency, everybody's going to look at you. So whatever you 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 were able to perform within your confine is what people are going to judge you if you are given the higher portfolio or larger portfolio. So Nigerians expect really, really somebody who has this empathy on ensuring that lives are secured. Then the third one, you just mentioned it on a person. You see, uh, freedom of speech is very important. So any person who is coming with such, such inclination, whether it's small or, or, or not, or my new, people are going to look at him from that angle of trying to, you know, uh, debase the, the, the third arm of, uh, you know, people being hard. Because people should be able to be hard when we talk about democracy. You just, so, you just took my, you just took my next democracy. question from me because I was about to point to that. There are so many issues, um, you know, surrounding freedom of speech or free speech within a boring state. In fact, um, the governor was also accused of uh, disappearance of his critics in the state, being that um, every time someone criticized them, the person would turn up missing. Uh, and um, a former coordinator of Anua Gata Development Center, Oposi in Ohio, Raza, local government area, um, Barrister Amos Obunaya, was recently kidnapped for criticizing the governor and his administration during a television program. Um, so 
a group, Association of Ebony Indigenous in Diaspora um, in Abuja, accused the governor of being intolerant of criticisms and opposing views. We already know that in a democracy, one of the most important tools is being able to protest, criticize, or free speech, just as you said. So if, we, if Nigerians are going through this now, why would we want to jump or hop on a boat uh, with a person who's almost the same or is giving us the body language as, as same as the person who's already leading us? Yeah, but you just answered it. That's exactly what I said. We, we have this uh, fundamental, as I mentioned, security, dictatorship, and of course, uh, freedom of speech. Once you have somebody that has that tendency of guiding people, trying to tell people that, look, look at me, I'm a, a demigod, definitely you're going to have a problem. And that's but, why but is that I'm not the same? That is that not detail for every politician, almost every politician in this country? They seem to be no. almost. Uh, intolerant of criticism that is why i said i started with my speech i said we we have to look beyond ethnicity beyond tradition beyond even zone we must make sure that 2023 we got it right because as i look at six years ago look at where we are today so we cannot go and pick somebody with such idea again such mentality such uh, you know um political policies that are some assaulting we need people with brain, people with vision, people with mission statement, people that can castigate problems and ensure that they are soluble. But as of today, this past six years has given Nigerians a clue of the kind of leader we need. Definitely, anybody that we want to take uh, up as our president, we have to swear the person from head to toe. Let us know his antecedents. Let's know who he is. So that when we are picking our president, we pick the best among the rest. And okay. that is my submission because as of today, Nigerians are going through hell and we cannot afford eight years again or, you know, such in, in human treatment. Our brand name as nation has been deteriorated. Our brand name as Nigerians have been diminished into such oblivion that if you answer a Nigerian abroad, people look at you with discord, you know, they, they look at you with uh, some kind of empathy as if you're sick. <laughs> so this is the problem we need to get it right 2023. If we don't get it right 2023, I'm telling you, uh, Nigeria is going to be very hard for us to get out of this boat that we put ourselves into. Okay. Fra Francis, um, you originally said that you do not like the modus operandi of Governor David Umahi, but I'm guessing that there has to be something good about him because there are people who are literally banding behind him um, as he has made this choice to run for the office of the president. But then I want to take you to something um, that, that was said about him some years ago. Uh, apparently, he was faulted as the worst performing governor uh, in Nigeria. Uh, a group had said that he was one of the worst, if not the worst performing governor uh, in Nigeria. And he faulted that uh, report, which listed him as one of the worst performing governors in the country. He called that report baseless. He said it was aimed at tarnishing his hard-earned image and reputation. And this was just before he moved from the PDP to the APC. And then now he's in the APC, obviously. Um, doctor said something that I want to push you further on, that we need to look for someone who has a good manifesto. We have to look beyond the ethnicity, the tribe. As much as the Southeast is looking for a president, um, we saw... Mr. President, President Buhari, as a no-nonsense general, a man that was willing to come and fight for the people. I do not know if we still hold that opinion right now, because there are people um, who have really great intentions, but then when they get into office, uh, we don't really see anything uh, close to what they promised us. So what do we need to, what kind of Googles, do, or goggles, I beg your pardon, do we need to wear to be able to descend and pick these politicians? Uh, well, I, I want to start by saying that I, I, I think we have uh, a, a sort of brain drain in our political system. Um, I do not honestly uh, buy the idea where you work at eight, you work eight years as a governor with nothing to show for it, and then you either want to become president or you will want to retire into the Senate. I mean, these are things that we need to change. We need to begin to look at our political life as a continuum, not just 
as people for retirement and they believe that, oh, if I go and become a president, it's fine. For me, Umayi is a no-no. Uh, you know, he doesn't have what it takes to be a president. He doesn't have the mindset. He doesn't have the character. We all know that. Anybody who believes in, you know, trying to suppress the press, trying to suppress freedom of speech, freedom of expression, that person cannot be a good leader. And he has not shown that even as a governor. I am shocked. I am still shocked. I'm shocked. And I'm surprised that up till now, Peter Obi has not come out formally to declare for presidency. It is people like Peter Obi that we need. People that have vision. People that have what it takes. People that are ready to make sacrifices. What we need as a leader in this country today, but who has a mindset not somebody who believes, oh, I have to be president because I want power, because I want to rule over the people. I mean, we've gone past that. The last six years, we all as Nigerians know that it has not been a guru. And so for me, it's not just about the Igbo presidency. It's about having the right character, the right personality coming out for Igbo presidency. Okay. Well, Francis Chilaka is a political analyst. Uh, Dr. Sunny Madika is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for being part of this conversation. Thank you, thank you very much, Miriam. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we look at the declaration of bandits as terrorists and what has changed since. Stay with us. <laughs>